So welcome everybody to my talk on uh, Newspell version 3. Uh, also talked about Newspell last year. Uh, this year I'm going to give uh, an update and also going to have some space for your input uh, because we're here at a meeting with all experts. And let's see how this works. So these are the things I'd like to talk about, give an introduction on Newspell, how it works, the technologies we use, uh, the dependencies on spell checking in general in operating system, and what's upcoming. So in short, uh, Newspell is a spell checker. It's a free open software. It consists of a library and a command line tool, and it's written in C++17. Our team consists of uh, Dimitri from Macedonia and myself from the Netherlands. And I'm gonna go quite rapid through this. Spell checking is not trivially, trivial. Uh, some people think oh, it's just a long list of words. You check if the word's in the list and then you know if it's spelled correctly or not. Uh, usually for some languages, those lists would be endless. So all sorts of mechanisms have been devised in order to do spell checking. Uh, to support conjugations, uh, complex morphologies, compounds, and so on. Please, have a seat. <laughs> so, for more on the history of spell checking, uh, you can check some talks I gave in, uh, at FOSDAM earlier. The specific goals of NewSpell are to be a, a drop-in replacement for browsers, office suits, and all kind of applications that use spell checking. Uh, it supports the MySpell and Unspell library f uh, dictionary format. Uh, the big difference with the other existing spell checkers is it's much faster, maintainable, it has uh, less dependencies, it's more portable. We, uh, as you can see later on, put it on, uh, compile it on many different platforms. And also opens the door for more uh, optimizations and functionality in spell checking in the future where other spell checkers have sort of walked into a dead end at the moment. So, it supports many character encodings, complex word compounding, affixing, rich morphology, etc., etc. This also discussed last time. And like before, we had now uh, another grant from Mozilla, for which we are very thankful. Otherwise, uh, we couldn't have had the resources to uh, develop this uh, spell checking library to where it came now. Uh, we had two projects and we're in the sort of two thirds of the, the second project. We had a version three out recently. And uh, since uh, last Friday, yesterday, we have uh, packages for Debian and Ubuntu. So now it really starts to count and it's usable because people don't have to compile it on the system. You just install the package and start using it. We did a lot of testing compared to Hanspell. Uh, the differences are neglig negligible and the speed at the moment is three, si three times faster but it highly depends on which language you're using and soon on our website will be a complete overview, updated overview of those uh, speed ups and uh, performances. So a little dive into uh, spell checking, won't spend too much time on that unless you have specific questions on that. Uh, this is sort of what it entails and to give some examples that uh, you find along the way which you don't think about normally is that certain languages, for example something simple like going to uppercase or lowercase is not trivial at all. So you can see for example for Greek that you can go uppercase that way but if you go back from the capital to this one, uh, well you know it can be only one but it depends where it's in the word. And another example is the capital I with a dot above for Turkish, or the ligature IJ in Dutch, or the sharp S in German. These are things if you would go back and forth going uppercase and lowercase, which you do a lot, by the way, in uh, spell checking, you might end up in a, in a, at a word you don't assume uh, you're ending up at. So with previous spell checkers, this was usually implemented with specific exceptions, and this information <laughs> is uh, contained in the Unicode library, the ICU library. So we use that instead of all specific kind of exceptions for 
supporting all different kind of languages. And the uh, LibRHU library is pretty big, has pretty wide support on these specifics. And it saves a lot, it makes a, uh, the spell checker uh, much more efficient and we don't have to make all these separate exceptions inside. Uh, we just rely on this. So the actual dependencies the library has is uh, libicu and libboost and nothing else. So it's, it's pretty independent. So after spell checking, you want to have suggestions. And suggestions are generated in many, many different ways. The ones with a star are added new in the version 3. The other ones we already had. And um, some people ask, how do these suggestions get generated? Well, you can see there are all these different kind of ways of finding suggestions. They all got <coughs> stacked in a pile and returned to the user. Like, these are suggestions with which you can fix your error. Uh, what's not yet in there, though, you can force it for a certain language, is to push a suggestion all the way to the top to have that as a first suggestion, because you know that's probably what the user wants. But in the future, we can generate all the suggestions and sort them, for example, by word frequency. And uh, probably all of you had one time suggestions from the spell checker, and then you think, what is that? <laughs> so we try to uh, make the world a little bit more boring by putting the most likely spelling suggestions at the top. Now, if you want to use this library, it's uh, very straightforward. Uh, the API is uh, compatible with uh, how uh, Unspell does that. Uh, these are some helper methods to see what kind of dic uh, dictionaries you got installed on your system. You can get the path of the specific dictionaries. You can load one, and then you're all set to do some spell checking, which is even more boring. Very easy. You just pass the word in. You get a Boolean out. And if you have a vector of strings, you can uh, have it filled with suggestions. So if you're afraid of implementing spell checking in your software, don't be. Just have it a go. It, you can see it's, it's not rocket science. The rocket science is inside the library itself. So as I said, uh, it's pretty uh, widely ported because we have not that many dependencies, and the dependencies are on very standard libraries, which are available for most platforms. So at the moment, we have these compilers, which uh, it all works for. And that is sort of like maybe 99% of the world's computers that can work with that. Uh, very shortly, these are the tools we use. Not very important on if you want to use a library unless you want to become part of the team, which you're welcome. So the things we changed uh, in the version 3 was uh, we upgraded to C++17. Uh, we used CMake to build the library and the command line tool. Uh, the API is easier, as you saw before, how to set up spell checking. You don't have to tell which character encoding or locale you're using. It defaults to UTF-8. Uh, the compounding and suggestions have been improved and it's now three times as fast uh, to, compared to Unspell. We made an enchant integration, uh, Debian Ubuntu packages, and the Firefox integration is coming up. But uh, these things look all really nice, but we have to be maybe realistic, and maybe you can help with this, is that if you have Debian packages, how long do you think you're away from getting included in a distribution release? Years. <laughs> if you have a Firefox build, how long do you think it will take before it's out there? Months. Yeah. Uh, Enchant integration, it's already a package in Ubuntu, so it just needs to be updated. So that's like maybe only one release further down the road. But if you happen to be in a position where you can uh, speed things up on Debian Ubuntu packaging, uh, please help us out. Then, some stuff which is new and uh, 
I really like to have your input on is I, uh, I made a short overview of packages which depend on spell checking. So uh, you might know spell checking started with spell, then with I spell, then we had A spell, my spell, Hun spell, new spell. Uh, we have also some specific spell checkers for Hebrew, and Turkish, and Finnish, but I left that a little bit out of scope in this thing. So, um, uh, how many of you work on software packages like packed stuff or develop software which is packaged in Ubuntu, Fedora, Red Hat, Debian, doesn't matter? Okay. So, how many packages you think are depending on spell checking libraries? Long list. So, I am. Uh, with these criteria, I sort of made an overview. Uh, so on Gspell, you have these things depending where they, where they get their spell checking. And Gspell itself might get it in another place. So this is like a fairly reasonable overview. Uh, Enchant is a well-known spell check uh, abstraction. You can get spell checking. It will see if you got a spell or hun spell or whatever installed. Do the spell checking there and get it back. But you see also other spell checking uh, modules or libraries are using Enchant. So, it get uh, this sort of like to focus on like these are all spell checking uh, software packages and these are all actual end users directly of Enchant. So you have like wrappers for wrappers, right? Enchant wraps your library and then GTK spell wraps and then it's all the way up. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a concatenation of uh, spell checking abstractions, wrappers. So we got iSpell, which is a fairly old one. And you would be amazed how many packages are depending on iSpell, like IPv6 toolkit, why not? Then we got the Python 3 support for Enchant which uh, caters to much more packages than Enchant caters itself. I'll just go through it and then we'll have a small discussion on this. So Hunspell is at the moment the, the best stable released spell checker. And as you can see, Enchant uses it, Chromium. This is a Hebrew spell checker, I spell, depends <coughs> on it, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Scribus, Thunderbird. So we saw GTK spell. <laughs> it took me half an hour to make up <laughs> the text here. <laughs> was one less beer for me yesterday. <laughs> and you can see the really old uh, spell checker uh, packages using this stuff. And it's, you find everything in here. So I was like almost pulling out my hair. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> So, it gets worse, we also have a spell. <laughs> okay. So, oh, well, that's an empty, yeah, here it is. So, for example, XML uh, copy editor, anybody knows this application? You can use XPath, you can go through XML, create XML, and so on. It also supports spell checking with a spell, there is a, uh, change to use hunt spell, right? hunting it for three or four years to get that into the final release. And they say, yeah, it should be there, it's still not there. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, this is not only a story on the, the new spell uh, release and integration and usage in, into, spell check, uh, into software packages, but actually for a lot of stuff. And it makes me that I made these kind of overviews also for fonts that there can be so many packages depending on just one or two other packages, which if you pull them in, they sort of pull in the whole Christmas tree of dependencies and you're stuck with it for years and years and years. So on one side, I'm curious, like what kind of suggestions you have for, of course, the new spell spell checking library was going to make your writings much faster, better, uh, how we can improve that, but also maybe a short discussion or questions in general on uh, how to deal with this uh, jungle of dependencies. <laughs> That's my reaction to when I see this. 
Anybody tried to get packages released and ran into this problem as well? Yes, there. Please. Age and still, so is it? You need it? It's very it's so hard to get a package into Debian. Uh-huh. That you might as well make 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 a doctor out of it. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the reply was that uh you can uh, better do it uh, your own roll it your own way than uh, you, you uh, wait for Debian. You can engineer it in by being friends with the Debian developer. For them it's like less overhead to just add one more package. So um <laughs> <laughs> So the suggestion was uh, to uh, become friends with Debian package mails. So I spent the last two days in the Debian uh, mini camp here at Fosdam. <laughs> <laughs> and I handed out lots of stickers and so on. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I should have bought more beers, but <coughs> the, uh, the people were very helpful to get me to get the packages properly. So we have Ubuntu and Debian packages. They build, they install, they run, and it's, everything is super to the detail in the last, latest versions. I'm very happy with their support. So then I mailed some of them. So can you get that in, in stable? Because I'm giving a talk about it. No. <laughs> but OK, I understand that there has to be uh, checks and reviews and so on, and that takes time. Uh, and that's just the way it is. I respect that, uh, because it also ensures that there's quality software in the releases. Yeah, but it is in SID or in testing right now. No, it's not. It should go, because it's a new package, it should okay, go to so new and then it should go to unstable. And uh, so get, getting it into releases, it will, it will land there finally. That's not so much my problem, my problem or my worry. My, my worry is more that if you work with software, please <laughs> use the latest version of whatever libraries you're using and uh, try to... to relax on the dependencies because this is so much so much <laughs> anyways mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, I had to upload the slides and then you have to type in how many pages it was I was like mm. <laughs> come on <laughs> <laughs> So at the moment we support Ubuntu 1910 and Debian 10. Uh, there is a build for FreeBSD. Uh, we like to build from these other platforms. Uh, if you have interest, uh, please contact us and uh, we help you try to help us or the other way around. Uh, at the moment it's C++ and C bindings via the, the API, but we like to have language bindings for Python, Java, and so on. So Ruby, whatever. Uh, some people told me that there are excellent uh, ways of generating language bindings. I looked into that, and they have like many different ways of doing it. And uh, you can also hint us like, ah, try this one to generate it. We will do the work. Just point us in the right direction, please. Uh -oh. So <laughs> that's sort of, in short, what Newspell does what we were up to last year and uh, the shock and awe of the dependencies uh, tree we came across. Yes? Uh, no, C and C++. Yeah, and if you run into a problem, just... Uh, uh, the question was, do I use... Uh, do we offer plain C bindings or uh, C++ binding? We offer both, C++ and C. And if you run into a problem, uh, trying to link or use or, or library, uh, let us know via an issue. And uh, thanks for your attention here in this Fosdam uh, afternoon, unless there are more questions. Um, what languages do you support and how do you add new languages in, what ah. in the process? Uh, so there are nine, uh, the, the question was, uh, what language do we support and what's the <laughs> process of adding new languages? Uh, the <laughs> languages we support are the ones which are also supported by Hunspell. Uh, so these are already existing, uh, we just uh, use these. Uh, I'm myself involved in uh, uh, updating the Dutch language support. You can read the documentation and start building language support for 
excuse me, a language which hasn't isn't existing yet. Uh, if you have questions, also contact us. Uh, as an exercise, I uh, I don't understand it, but I implemented a Klingon spell checker. Uh, just to see how that would go about starting from zero. And Klingon, for those who don't know, uh, you can write it in, in Latin characters, but also in Klingon Unicode characters. So it was a good test to do spell checking on completely weird Unicode characters, which are way down, and it still works. So uh, uh, these 90 languages sort of reach about 200 countries or regions around the world, uh, uh, because like many languages are spoken in uh, more countries. Do <coughs> you have any specific language uh, in mind, maybe? Well, I work a lot with like smaller languages. Like, like Elfish? So my question would be more, what's like how much time it would need? So if you now come up with a new question, for example, Klingon, how much time yeah. does it take to add the Klingon? It depends how much information you have on that language. So for that Klingon, I had a, uh, I found a, a database in which uh, uh, conjugations were also available. And that helped making the affix file. But start with the word list and then see if you can uh, add language rules in order to shorten the word list or extend the, the coverage of compounds and so on. Uh, question. Yeah. How does integration with uh, Firefox or Mozilla work then? and LibreOffice, first question? And the uh, second one, is there a system to enrich the dictionary and give it back to everyone? I mean, where you don't have an op something to open source yeah. in general, uh, that you could you know, import. So the question is, uh, how does the integration go with uh, Firefox and LibreOffice? Uh, that's just uh, an API, as, a, as I showed. Uh, it's, a, it's a shared library, or you can link it statically. It's just a few calls uh, you make, and the, it's the same calls you make with Hunspell. So if you're going to migrate, it's uh, meant as a drop-in replacement, so you don't have to rebuild, uh, restructure your program in order to use it. And the second question is how to uh, enrich the dictionaries with word lists. That's a good question. Uh, all spell checkers support personal dictionaries for maybe your your name or the street you live in. Words you'll use a lot, which may not be in the dictionary for your country. But uh, that's how I, actually how I got involved. I moved from one installation to another installation, and I was moving along my personal dictionary all the time, and it grew and it grew. And it's like, yeah, but these words should be in the dictionary. So just then you have to look up who is a responsible for that, contact that person and just send a list of words like, please include these. For English, it's a website called uh, Skull, maybe you're familiar with. On our uh, wiki in GitHub, there's a, ho a whole list of all the languages which are supported, including the contact information. So you can go there, you can send an email, or go to the website. They have their rules in order to include a word or not, and otherwise you have to keep it in your personal dictionary. Uh, and as you saw, the whole dependency challenge is also another challenge with personal dictionaries because you have a personal dictionary for all languages you use in Firefox, in LibreOffice, in Aspel, in Enchant, in Hunspell. So have a look around on your system, how many personal dictionaries you have and how much they differ. And they also use different formats. So uh, see if you can contribute words to those upstream dictionaries and. Uh, make them smaller. Uh, lastly, I also want to thank my colleague who couldn't be here, Dimitri. He uh, does a lot of the, the hard and complex world, word, work, excuse me. And uh, the uh, Dutch Foundation Open Taal, who uh, sponsored the stickers, which are available here at our Fosdam stand. So if you had, didn't have any stickers yet, come by our stand tomorrow and get some stickers. Thanks for your attention.